Hey everyone, welcome to the latest episode of Land of Confusion, the one where I couldn't remember what number we're on, so I just kind of, I'll figure it out in post, I guess. Uh, so it's me, David, the Tory War writer, and uh, Flicker here, and we're talking kind of a catch up because, you know, holidays and every, uh, all the things, and you you mentioned to me that you'd just gotten back from vacation. Want to talk about that? That was, uh, oh, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, that's code word. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, video, the capital V-I-D in video mm -hmm. means uh, the thing that's been rampaging the world for the last two years, so they say. Ah. Mm -hmm. And vacation mm -hmm. refers to any word that starts with V-A-C. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I see, honestly, yeah. yeah, because, I, you know, I, I don't even know how YouTube works anymore. Mm -hmm. people are talking about it all right i mean like right now i have a a country full of like thousands of truck drivers going to the uh, or to our capital to protest the fact that they're being uh, they're having their own problems with the video uh vacations <laughs> they're having their own problems with video vacations yeah just oh videos. oh yes oh <laughs> video vacations boy oh it's my own code <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and I hear I read this morning now, or just a little while ago on on Ricochet that the price of diesel has gone up. So, oh yeah, it's a little oh, yeah. bit, but it's not as bad as California. Yeah, no, so, we got, yeah, it's uh, what is it? Uh, no, they. It, it's been interesting watching Canadian media because it's all bought and paid for by the government these days, except for a few handful of uh, independent outlets and. Uh, uh, so you got like the first start, uh, the, the government pro, uh, like, uh, or the, the news is like, yeah, there's just a couple hundred people proceeding and the government thinks it's 2000. Meanwhile, 50,000 trucks and more trucks coming up from the United States and just for every random person who has a car and a little bit of time is converging on the, on the nation's capital for the weekend. So it's been like, uh, and then there's been all these like, it's demonization when people are like, oh, uh, you know, there's one guy driving by with the, the Confederate flag and it's like, that means they're all racist. I'm like, uh, not exactly. I mean, I remember 10 years ago, me and a friend, a bunch of us went down to this convention in Syracuse, New York. And there was this weird roundabout uh, near the hotel. And if you missed the, uh, the, the right time to get off the roundabout, you would be stuck going down this side road. So every time we ended up down this side road, like half the pickup trucks, in pe people's houses had a Confederate flag on the back of their truck. And I'm like, don't these people realize they're in New York and you know, you were the unions, one of the chief union states? Like, what's all this about? Yeah. So, so there's been all this. And I had another guy who was like the top uh gone into a, a bit of a discussion with a guy in, on Twitter who's basically the the runs the chief polling firm in Canada and uh, as far as I'm concerned the most accurate but the things that were just coming out of this guy's mouth were just like so completely clueless I'm like how can you have accurate polling but never have any kind of critical thought ever you said that out loud <laughs> oh yeah I, I didn't say that to him but I was just like uh, looking yeah. back on it, it was just like I did say he said well I've heard there's all these uh, radical groups that are coming up to take over the protest I'm like okay what are the names of these groups what are their membership numbers and what are they saying and he's like and he comes back oh well I just heard like there's some people on Twitter were saying talking how this will be Canada's January 6th I'm like seriously you don't even have a name of a single organization <laughs> like there's like I've run into these people, they're these right, not right wing, but there's basically biker, racist biker gangs who will show up to be. You mean when you're driving a truck, you run into them? Uh, no, uh, I, I've gone oh. to conservative protests. Oh, okay. uh, they showed up they, when the first yellow, we had some very small yellow vest sympathy protest here in Canada against Trudeau. And the first time you went out to them, you went to these things and they were like low information voters, uh, you know, the kind of people you might meet at a bar and have a conversation with two months later the most of these people those people were chased off and they're the sons of odin 
Sons, is that a biker gang? Yeah, but they're they're yeah neo neo Yahtzee biker gang is a better good way. I was just like really like you you had like this like spontaneous grass, grassroots like people just protesting and then these other people chase them away and replace them with the the ugly underbelly. But I mean the ugly underbelly is like I I I looked at uh, Canadian government reports from a few years ago. It's like two or three thousand in a country of 35 million people versus, uh, you know, if all of them showed up in Ottawa, they're still going to be outnumbered 25 to one by regular people. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, how did that happen? Who, who? I mean, they just, they, they decided intrinsically to show up and to yeah, they, take over? They, they want, they like any um, bad group, they want to take over the organization and just like, make everything like they're what ultra white nationalists like they just want to be they take it and because most people don't have most regular people don't have the spare time to protest they end up like just being an ugly underbelly or like regular people are like well they're here i don't want to be associated with them so they go home i must lead an awfully sheltered life because well, i don't are, know yeah. any like you live in a, a very small island, so. Well, no, no. I mean, just in general, I've mm -hmm. I've hung out with, you know, weird guys, but I I don't know. I've never met a group of white nationalist, racist yeah. white nationalists. I've just never. Yeah, and well, I think in America, you also I think one of the ways you end up not having these problems is because when you go to like a Tea Party protest back in the day or that, there would be like thousands of people tens of thousands of people and a handful of these guys showing up and causing trouble they'd be chased off but mm -hmm. in canada this the, the the what the our yellow vest protesters were like 20 to 30 people like there was not much to this they were just kind of in, wildly inspired by what they were watching in france they said we can do that and then uh, you know there's only like 20 or 30 of them hanging around first and when these other bad people show up they it was much easier for them just to make it a, a, a worse situation <laughs> so well do co canadians do they did they actually get up out of their chairs and offer them to the to the bikers because canadians are just such nice people right yeah that, that's yeah. another problem sort of like so you it, it worked out okay i mean like sometimes you do get bigger protests montreal quebec is a different issue than mo most of the rest of the, pro the country uh, so when they were having their anti-mandate protests, you would get 100,000 people showing up versus in Ontario, you know, you might get two to 4,000 people. But even then, our mainstream media would like underreport it and do whatever they could to suppress it. But the mainstream media has is taking a $600 million bailout every year from the government. Has, has um, the Francophone, Anglophone... Uh, conflict uh, abated mostly. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, yeah. I mean, I remember it from like twenty-five years, thirty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I got a message from my political candidate, new candidate. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. The the referendum talk has gone away. There's more, and the, there's probably more support for a Western separation, which is not that high. Uh, than there is for uh, Quebec independence at this point. Huh. I just don't. Is Quebec completely landlocked with uh, Anglophone uh, Canada? Sort of. Like New yeah, Brunswick is a province that is like 50-50. So they're very, it's a very uh, Quebec-oriented, like not Quebec-oriented, French-oriented thing, like under our constitution or uh, New Brunswick says, you know, we are equal, you, it's like almost like the Equal Rights Amendment except for French and English. It's like nothing takes precedence over one or the other. Uh, we are fully, we, they consider itself the bilingual province. Uh, uh, but mm -hmm. what happens as a friend of mine, she was, is from Quebec. She moved to Ontario. And when she moved, she's like, she's like, there are a couple million French Canadians who don't live in Quebec, and we are treated as non-citizens and like we don't exist. 
there's like large communities in throughout Ontario where I live, mainly in the north or along the Ottawa River that are very more, they're more French, like you know, French is the first language there. And they don't, uh, basically don't exist as far as Quebec is concerned. So there's a lot yeah, of uh, animosity to rest to Quebec from the, uh, from the non uh, Quebec French. Yeah, I was just thinking though of, of um, Lesotho or Lesotho uh, in South Africa. It's an independent country, mm -hmm. but it's com but it's com it's it's like the nucleus of a cell. It's completely surrounded by one other country, and you you just I just somehow that doesn't make sense to me. It's it's sort of like uh, what happens if they don't like you? Where how are you? They can they can they can cut off every road. One country can cut off every road you've got. Yeah. And, I, and I think there might be one other country like that. Yeah, they're all of, uh, was it uh, Bosnia Herzegovina? I'm pretty sure it's like that. Mm -hmm. Well, so so it, does Quebec? Well, Luxembourg is definitely that. <laughs> oh, really? Huh. Luxembourg is like this tiny little city state surrounded by Belgium, Germany, and France. <laughs> it's like the well, tip no, of Belgium not, but, there. But, but, but I mean, just one, I, that, if, even if no matter how small you are, if mm. you've got two countries that you border, you can make friends with one when when the other one gets mad at you. Yeah. But it just seems like being a an independent state that's completely surrounded by another state mm. just somehow seems to me to to not it, it seems to be to be a very precarious position. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And usually it exists because it's convenient for the the other state that's surrounding you in some way. And it's usually right. I think in the same situation with Lesotho and Bosnia Herzegovina it's because it's easier to concentrate all these people in one place and have them dealt there than having to go and wipe them out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you see, yeah. Yeah. So does Quebec, does it have any border with any other country besides well, the United Anglophone States, Canada? United so States. it does. It does. Okay. So, the and Quebec I mean, it has plenty of water. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then they can be an independent country. Yeah, it would, it'd be really inconvenient for Canada if that happens, but we're pretty sure, I think uh, one of the things that Quebec's kind of realized is that without Canada, their culture and identity probably would be gone in 50 years. Why is that? Because it will be like, uh, uh, we have, a, basically they'll be like swamped by America with culture oh, really? and they don't have the in the, the the ability to hang on them by themselves they'll be like uh, they'll be basically new orleans writ large <laughs> right huh right plus we give them a lot of money to stay in the country which is why a lot, a lot of the west is resentful mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. well <clears throat> So, I don't know. I'm just, you go ahead, bring up another topic. Well, I mean, you were asking why we got our one of our episodes uh, blocked a while back by the YouTube gods. I oh, said yeah. in our appeal. And of course, we'll never know why because they never tell anyone those, that kind of stuff. Really? Hmm. But, but you got, but you won the appeal. Oh, yeah. I just pointed out like, we're just two guys shouting off into the internet. No one is, should be paying any attention to us in any particular way. <laughs> and that seemed to work. Really? A human being? Did, or did, did an algorithm uh, understand what you were writing? And... Well, uh, human beings do the review. So the algorithm picks up some word or phrase yeah. that they don't like. And then they block you. And then you, you send a review in. And then like a week later, a human being for a channel as small as ours, a week later, some human being looks at it and is like, yeah, there's just two guys talking here. <laughs> yeah. I remember telling my brother-in-law that I, I forget, it was apropos of something, but I was talking to somebody on the, on the phone and, and I just said, let me just say this word first. And now I self-censor, so I'm going to spell it. The word I said was, it began with a B and it ended with a B and there was an O and an M in the middle. Right. And I just said that word. And the guy just laughed and I just said, now that I've gotten that out of the way, this was, I don't know, five, close to 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I told my uh, brother-in-law about this and he just ragged on me for an hour saying that was the stupidest thing you could have done. But I never got censored about it. But mm -hmm. now, well, I mean, I might've gotten on a secret list, but by now I'm sure I faded off of it. But uh, the, 
but, but now I, I just, I, I, this whole thing of just this little teeny thing of being of YouTube just temporarily blocking our our conversation really really makes me think that everything that I say is being everything I type in ricochet is probably being being monitored. Oh yeah, it's all being recorded by the NSA. Well, Everything's no, being yeah, recorded but, by yeah. the NSA and they got giant computers trying to sift through, trying to make meaning of it all. So the best thing we could do is create more content so they have less time to check. <laughs> but but even the NSA doesn't, I don't think that they would pick on you or me. Well, you, oh, no. yeah, you're a politician. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, being coming from a foreign country as you are, you know, you, your voice is uh, probably not quite uh, a, a U.S., and maybe, you know, maybe terroristic, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been to several gatherings of national security people in the United States. People who are like working from the Rand Corporation and are mid-ranking military officers. I've been to Quantico and the uh, the was that uh, George? Uh, uh, no, the in Gettysburg, there's the Army War College, and I've been to those for conferences. So I definitely am out on a list. <laughs> I know that. But you, but if they let you in without it, without making you take your shoes off, then mm. you you're you're on you're 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 not on a list, or it's you're at the very bottom. So if they don't even look at oh, you. Oh yeah, I'm on a different type of list. I'm on like, uh, was it? Uh, uh, I was driving around a car at one of the con my one of my first conferences, not the the one we had at Quantico, not the one that we had before, which was semi unofficial. Uh, sequestration had come down like a month earlier, so suddenly all the all my. Uh, it was like they the the formal military conference got reduced to basically run being run out of a guy's house in a month. But huh. the I was there and uh, me and my friend I was I was driving around my friend's minivan with another guy who was like a higher ranking military scientist and he's like so uh, and my friend says to the the scientist he's like so have you filled out you figured out what you're going to say in your foreign contact report about Dave here and he's like. Uh, yeah, I have a few thoughts. I'm like, what are you talking about? But apparently you have to, if you uh, have a security clearance, you have to write down all your foreign contacts and I count. So I know I'm in government documents because I'm like, the new, I'm a foreign contact. <laughs> right, and you are sort of a, a quasi government official. I understand that you yes. actually are sponsoring a, uh, a candidate uh, for for public office, are, are you? And I'm you're... not sponsoring her, but I'm like on the. I'm a member of the local association, so she's running for pro provincial office against the leader of the opposition. And of course, that means we're, as I've said on m many occasions, uh, I'm basically like, well, I'm the ex president. There's an RNC chair who runs the California uh, district, a candidate against Nancy Pelosi every two years. I'm like that guy. <laughs> Okay, so you're so you're sort of like a a, a guerrilla fighter with right. with uh, your bare hands and your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go out knocking on doors and stuff. That's about it. Like there you go. But I yeah, you're right about my quasi thing. It reminds me, I have to still finish the latest round of training they sent down. But uh, yeah, I'm on a civilian board where we dole out money to worthy causes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to talk about that? What what's what board yeah. is this? So there is something in Ontario called the Trillium Foundation. It was set up by one of the previous governments in like the 1970s, late 70s, early 80s to be like a public, like they set a bunch of money aside and it's a trust fund and the government uh, doles it out to worthy uh, things. And uh, once every every three to four months, we hold, a, we get together, we're sent out uh, there are these civilian panels that are set up by region across the province. Uh, I'm part of the one from Hamilton. Uh, and we get together, we get sent these things where we have to judge and score out all these various grant proposals. And then we sit down in committee and we argue who's the most worthy person to get it. And yeah, so I'm a member of one of these, uh, what's called the Grant review team for the Trillium Foundation for Hamilton. So, so what kind of grants do you deal with? So, uh, a good example would have been uh, when we did our capital grants. 
We had the wa- I'm not supposed to talk about these ones, but I figured this one's a good example. No one's going to be surprised by it. The local YWCA facility came to us and said, we need a grant for um, this amount of money to do uh, to improve the air conditioning in our 40 year old building. And so that was definitely a, a thing like, you know, prove uh, the airflow for like the why and we had to judge them based out on what how much community good they did and yeah so we that was definitely one I didn't didn't mind giving money towards I won't say one of the ones that I didn't like giving money towards but like you know, like we gave a large capital grant to the local why young women's association so that they could uh, upgrade their air conditioning well, that's pretty good. Where do you get your money from? It's a there's like a the one the like it's a it's like a trust fund or or whatever. So it's like how many years ago I, it was not a billion and probably is a billion dollar endowment now, but it's basically a public endowment. Hmm. And how did you get on? Uh, how did you? Well, it's, uh, three questions. One is how did how did the why find you? How hmm. did you find? this uh endow this fund and how did you get uh to be on the board okay so the a lot of, uh i found uh, the government contacted me about the board i had no idea these boards existed before they contacted me uh i got through years of hard working service to the progressive conservatives of ontario so i'm like i get uh, these are kind of these are this is what we call a patronage appointment and uh it's uh, when I thought it was kind of a weird thing to see it, but once I went through the process a couple of times, I saw the what the purpose is, is to get people who are somewhat noted members of the community to see the good works that this foundation is doing and connecting the people. So it's like a public, uh, a volunteer public service position. I don't get paid unless COVID ends and we can start doing like public, like, one day when the Y gets their air conditioning and they're going to send one of the members out to like uh, give a speech. And we do get I, like a, a small per diem for showing up to those kind of events. I don't mean to say you would do this, but can you embezzle? Nah, I can't embezzle this thing. <laughs> you can embezzle in the progressive conservative uh, party funds like my predecessor. <laughs> oh really, how did that happen? Uh, the government of Canada did something, used to do something really stupid. Uh, they, instead of sending a check, so when we have, uh, this is a little different for America than this is Canada. So when the federal parties are running, we have public funding uh, of, of elections. So we spend a certain, you can't spend more per riding than say a hundred grand during the writ. It depends on how long the writ period is during the election. Uh, but it's usually a hundred grand, but there was a few, a couple years ago, we had a big election where it went on 10 weeks. So we got a much higher cap for that 10 week period. Uh, but usually an election here is five weeks. Uh, so you get your hundred grand to spend. Now, not every association will spend the hundred grand as my association didn't have a hundred grand to spend, but we spent a lot of money uh, in, in the thing. And when you're, if you get a certain minimum amount of vote, which is here is 15% of the federal, you get, uh, no, it's 10% of the federal, 15% provincially. So you get uh, 20% of whatever you spent back in a check. And you would think that the government would send the check in the name of the local riding association or, or in the name of the campaign fund that like, so and so election campaign. No, they sent it in as a personal in a check name to the uh, to the official agent. Huh. Just his name. So he gets a check one. My predecessor gets a check one day in the mail for thirty thousand dollars, and he doesn't know what it's for. He says he does, yeah, and that's a whole other thing. <laughs> what, what he thought he was doing, uh, he went to his grave, never really trying to explain it. it was, the last time he talked to me about it, he was something like, Dave, uh, I don't, can't explain it. I'm like, dude, you just don't worry about it. I was that word, like I was more upset yeah. because I was like public official and I just assumed he 
had, thought his check came in and he was older and didn't have him as it turned out not very much longer to live so he just took the money and and ran <laughs> to where and, to the to the bahamas no we <laughs> think he had a uh, gambling debts uh, yeah. but he would not admit to that and as we said like oh if he just admitted to this he could have avoided a lot of the problems he had but i think it was huh. like you know you hear about this a lot of times with other people you try to avoid you to avoid having to, to deal with the situation, you try to suppress it for long as long as possible. And I know what he was probably trying to do. He thought he, he thought he was going to pay back the the money before anyone knew about it. But there's a whole other conversation. I won't go into too many details. Right. But ge- generally, my predecessor did in desolate. Uh, he was publicly arrested in the last days of an election. It was fun. <laughs> wow. It was a fun phone call to central casting. That was. Or the, the the that poor kid that day when he got a phone call from me saying, "Yeah, by the way, my predecessor was just uh, arrested for embezzling thirty thousand dollars, and it's on the news. You might want to party headquarters might want to know this." He's like, "Oh my god!" And then my regional organizer called me back and was like, "Don't worry, the regional organizer is taking care of it." <laughs> Good. Yeah, I wonder how how uh, I don't know. Let's talk about Canada. Uh, I saw a movie once that might apply. It had to do with entertainment, but it might apply to politics. Uh, it was a kind of a kooky movie. But anyway, in politics, if you run for office and you get like $200,000 in, in campaign donations and mm. you only spend 100000 of it and you lose, do you get to keep that extra 100000 Because I in saw Canada, it in the movie once. In Canada, it would go back to your uh, campaign fund. So you wouldn't be able to spend that money. There's a whole lot of restrictions to prevent you from doing that kind of stuff. Well, that kind of shenanigans. I understand in the United States, it might be a little different. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I, I don't know. If, I remember, uh, yeah, I remember distinctly when Rick Perry dropped out of the 2016 presidential race, he, there was a seat, there was a, this was one of the, one of the policy PACs that he was, super PACs, that was it. Had yeah. like $7 million and they had to give it back. Yeah. So, but I understand he's a little bit more sketchy with some of the, the super, uh, with the money in the states than it is up here. We're yeah. a very regulated country. Mm-hmm. So I should stick with playwriting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that what you do? No, no. But I, I mean, I saw this movie called The Producers a long time. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it was, it just gave me such an idea that I. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that Ricochet is nothing more than uh, a producer scheme by Rob Long and Peter Robinson. Because <laughs> you can see okay. those two of those characters. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've never actually seen them, but uh, but yeah, just from the the reputation that I hear. Mm-hmm. And they are, they are, at least one of them is in the business, in the entertainment business, right? Right. <laughs> so he would have an inside, he could be an executive producer for a failed movie. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I know he's definitely <laughs> been executive producer for a number of uh, short live TV series. Huh. Uh, he, maybe, he... maybe I should do, do a post on that. Yeah. Rob Long, <laughs> producer, or is he? <laughs> producer or grifter no just yeah. kidding just kidding rob i don't even know you <laughs> yeah, right. though like years ago when i first joined ricochet i actually did post a thing to the feed saying hey uh rob long uh, picture show to rob long we have and i said like look we have this guy here's a tv producer he's always look i'm sure he's looking for ideas we didn't get many posts but he did co- uh, comment on it <laughs> One of the few times. <laughs> um, well, that's good. I'm glad that he at least put in a comment. Mm-hmm. What was it? Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, I'm glad to hear any good. I think it was like, I'm sure glad to hear any ideas that anyone had, but no one really had any good ideas. So it worked out. But, and I'm sure someone had pointed it out to him. <laughs> I don't think he's trolling the boards every day. Probably not. 
certainly during the Christmas party, we had an insider come on and talk about that. And that's a good reason to come to our like land of confusion uh, Christmas parties or whatever, when we're doing like those like private, this is more for the group, um, private members things like we have people ha can have a bit more honest conversations than they do on the main show when we don't want to get kicked off the platform. <laughs> Hmm. Well, yeah, but why don't you record those? Why didn't, did you record that? Uh, no, and party? if I did, I, I wouldn't have had the conversation, some of the conversations we had. Yeah, because I'm sorry, I really wanted to attend, but hmm. I, 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 I forgot. Oh, <laughs> because, okay. you know, I think it was what, was it, was it uh, actually Christmas day that, that the, the, the No, we did was? like the 23rd or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to attend, but mm, stuff comes yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, it's holidays. I'll put, uh, we having a special one coming up next week. Uh, we're doing, uh, you know, Ricochet movie fights. Yeah. They want to do a show. With a, a bunch of the, the, the more, the people who tend to win a lot. And we're going to try and recreate like a, a live action uh, Ricochet movie fights on Land of Confusion. That sounds interesting. That sounds actually, um, if you could actually get them all in one room and, and, and cover their, their, their fists with, uh, with glue and glass. Oh, yeah. Would... <laughs> Instead, we're just going to ask them questions on Zoom. Oh, well, I'm sure that, that people, I'm sure people can get pretty pointed in their speech. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have uh, some, uh, I think it's like LC used to scrubs and, uh, C writer, so yeah, those three can really mm. drag it down, <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> well, that sounds good. That sounds like a great one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what else do we have here? We have a, a um, I'm hoping to start rounding up some guests again so we can start doing like our normal show where we talk to people on the, uh, on the thing. Uh, I, oh, I know Brian was very this uh, is sad because he was supposed to be uh join us that one night for uh uh was it uh the night we got censored and he's like i can't believe i missed i wasn't censored this would have been perfect for me <laughs> <laughs> well i i really wish i had had been able to talk to him about um psychology because uh you know boy i could have i could have really delved into uh, you know the, he basically presented basically one paragraph of information mm -hmm. but i would have i would have been interested in every sentence that he oh i was interested in every sentence that he said and 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 i always find it interesting to talk to professionals because mm -hmm. they have a peculiar uh insight and and frame of reference i guess that's their 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 uh, unique body of knowledge mm -hmm. that uh that I could, I would, I would have loved to have talked to him for an hour. You could have just sat back and smoked a doobie. Well, I don't do <laughs> Not that. that you but do I would that. have had a nice. Yeah, break. I know you don't. And I don't either. And I, yeah, know, I never have. Mm. Uh, that I recall. <laughs> no, I was like at the first like serious party after, right around the end of high school, and there were people smoking marijuana, and they offered me some, and I was like, I can't stand the smell of you guys smoking it. I'm not going to take one. <laughs> this is a habit I well, don't. I, well, I probably shouldn't have brought it up, and I've never, uh, that I recall, ever. So, mm -hmm. no, alcohol is more than enough habit for me. My though my friends are like it, it's a lot cheaper, Dave. I'm like, eh, I got the money to burn. Uh, <laughs> I knew a guy who was, I, the, the, who who smoked a lot, and and he, and and knowing him, lent. Uh, some some strength to the argument that that marijuana smokers tend to be so mellow they never really apply themselves is that have you noticed that or is that just well, something my friends who do it are uh, not people who smoke it they uh, do it with a bong well i wouldn't hmm. uh, i wouldn't know how that differs yeah neither do oh, i well, a lot yeah. less smell i guess is the difference really huh. hmm. I don't know. I should, maybe I should, um, I just watched, what's his name? The guy that was doing uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Who's that guy that, 
forgetting Sarah Marshall. I think leaving Sarah Marshall. Forgetting. Sarah I, I, Marshall. I, I I'm I sort of know the name, but I don't I don't think I've ever watched it myself. Well, I, I who Russell Brand. Okay. Yep. Russell Brand. Yeah. He. I should. I should probably. I, I was just watching uh, his video to just before the show and. And I probably should put in there what what I understand that you smoke a lot of pot. What's it like? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's certainly a, he's an interesting guy. I've started following him a bit too since the pandemic. And I mean, he's uh, I think come a long way from when he first started out. He was kind of like uh, he was hanging out with the communists at the beginning and protesting with them. And people were like those of us all just thought he was crazy. Right. But uh, now he seems to make a lot of sense. And I think he's just kind of matured when you when you first join into politics and you go and you get involved, you kind of like go whole. A lot of times people when they go, I call it like getting received knowledge. So you'll see this in religion. You'll see this in other groups. When you join in, you like go in with gangbusters and then hopefully you start to mellow out and get like over that initial hot religious high and uh, start thinking for yourself and not just going all in every time and russell brand seems to have developed a much more like he's got a he's a what i would think more yeah, of a left libertarian now yeah he almost seems like a 60s uh a liber, uh, uh democrat yeah almost, almost yeah almost but he just today he just talked about bill gates and you could see it was cut and it was there were so many cuts in in the presentation that sometimes he would there would be a cut and it would it would flow the sound of the voice would flow but he would say allegedly <laughs> <laughs> allegedly yes because he said at one point he said i mean like a person like me i, I don't have if you're if a person uh, that doesn't have the money to fight uh, a, a a libel litigation <laughs> mm. Uh, but apparently, I mean, how, let me ask you this, because I, I, I know so little about YouTube. I just watch, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I actually I actually watched uh, as an as a as a digression, which probably I will, I will forget what my point was by the time I get to my, my digression. But I I watched the final countdown because I'm Ron Ricochet. I they, somebody put up probably Key Davis mm -hmm. uh, put up uh, just a, a snippet of, of the final countdown. You know that the Kirk Douglas movie with uh, yeah yeah I was wondering uh, he's either talking about the song or he's talking about the movie <laughs> oh yeah 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 oh the song uh, but um, I actually the only movie that I could that I could see the whole thing in mm. uh, in forward in in actual watching it was it was very quiet very muted the sound was muted but uh, there was a voiceover in in I think Vietnamese. And uh, that was interesting. So I don't really know much about YouTube, but this was that was an interesting experience. Russell Brand said, I think he says four. I think he made reference to four point six million viewers. And I think that he was talking about himself. Do you have any idea what kind of monthly income that is? I, I can't. I, I uh, a friend know. of mine was doing uh, a, a while ago. He's got like two hundred twenty thousand subscribers now. And he uh, he was a big Britney Spears fan, and when he started covering the uh, the Britney Spears uh, uh, trial because she's trying to get herself no longer committed, right? Right. So he was getting a thousand people a stream on those episodes, and uh, he got uh, he was making eleven grand a month on some of these things. And now he's doing a lot better. He's got like in some streams he's getting like a, he, he was covering uh, th this murder that was happening down the street in his in Florida. And some of those streams were getting like 10,000 people. So I was like, now he said, I'm not, I'm hoping just to keep a fraction of that audience. And he now does. He has anywhere whenever he's doing his show, he's doing like some his good shows nowadays are 1300 things. So I'm assuming he's making 10 grand a month, 10 to 20 grand a month doing that now. And he's got Russell Brand's got four million subscribers. Yeah, he can be making a good deal of change. Uh, there's a way. You, there's several different websites you can go to that will measure people on uh, on how much how successful they are. So your friend got a thousand viewers, and he made a, a ten thousand a month. 
no, he, no, he's doing live streaming, which is not necessarily views or clicks. It means when he's doing a live stream, he's got 1300 people watching him uh, during like, say a three hour show. And he's doing mm -hmm. that every day. He was, I oh, think he's yeah. actually making more like when he first, when he showed me he was making his 11 grand a month or 13 grand a month or whatever it was. He was doing like a show every other, like twice a week on, on the Britney Spears coverage and he was getting 1500 people. So he's doing that. So now he's doing it more consistently. So I think he's making more like 20 grand, but I don't know the cost per view. I know that uh, uh, we did a video once together because I was, he brought me in as a historical uh, historian to comment on stuff and we got like yeah. 5,000 views or no like 8,500 views and I think we made, he made 50 bucks on the video that's okay so so do you get paid by the view or do you get paid by subscription uh, you get paid by both. Or, by, by both so if you have like if you have people like me who have premium uh, premium package you will get paid money by people like me for watching your videos out of our like 10 bucks a month we're paying for the privilege of not watching ads and then otherwise you're getting paid per per view and for and it has to be a certain amount of watch time so this is why people get on youtube with a, a circular saw and talk about a circular saw for 45 minutes mm -hmm. wow yeah. i guess yeah. if you have the gift of gab yeah, uh, YouTube is. Huh. I mean, Maybe we should do that. <laughs> you and I. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, go, what we're doing right here. Yeah, but I did. I never thought of actually promoting it. Maybe mm -hmm. we can get uh, Ricochet to sponsor us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it was something uh, I talked a long time ago when we last had uh, Blue Yeti on. I'm kidding, by the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. But no, yeah. I'm not. Uh, somewhat not kidding because he was saying I really want uh, me and Don were interviewing Blue Yeti. And he said, like, well, I've always, we were talking about what kind of shows he's looking for. And he's like, well, I've always been looking for the members show. And Don's like, what do you think we're you're on? And he's like, oh, maybe we should talk. We never did talk because, like, you know, we're getting, like, 50 views. And I think he was looking for people getting a couple thousand views. But, I mean, like, maybe uh, and once we get around to show 100, we'll invite him back on and we'll talk about that. Like just uh, having even internal promotion through Ricochet would be pretty good. Well, what is Ricochet's membership? I think I counted, I think the most I've ever seen on a, a likes for a, mm -hmm. for a, um, for, for any post is something like a hundred likes. Yeah. I've had 100 likes once when I writ, uh, dug into uh, I called Richard Epstein bad things or oh, well. I, got, I didn't get I thrown into the main feed for that, but I did get a hundred likes. <laughs> he he had posted a post on Ricochet saying that Trump should resign within the first three weeks of his office. And he said, Who's this wouldn't that? be that bad. I'm like, what are you kind of? This is Richard Epstein. Yep. Guy from law talk. Yeah. I did a rebuttal. I got a hundred likes. It was not promoted to the main feed. <laughs> huh, I wonder if he had any hand in that. <laughs> no, well, no, I, I violate. There is in the code of conduct for being promoted to the main feed. There are certain things that you have to do, and uh, I looked at that the rules, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm not going to change the spirit of this post. Will be destroyed if I adhere to these guidelines," which is fine. There's sometimes sometimes you post things to the membership feed, knowing they'll never get to the main feed, and that's fine by me. Uh, and then there was the one day when one of those posts got ac not accidentally posted to the main feed, but someone who shouldn't have promoted to the main feed liked it so much he did, and it promptly I had like I was starting my walk and it's like you're been promoted in the main feed, and I'm like this post should not be on the main feed, and then I thirty minutes later I get a message. Your post has been moved from the main feed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> huh. wow. So how do how do people uh, when they get on YouTube? There, there say I don't know. There are a million people with their own ch YouTube channel. Uh, in, probably in United hundred millions. A hundred million in the United States. Uh, no, probably a lot less in the United States. Yeah. 30 million, 20 million, 10 yeah, million. Yeah, something like that. Something. And people have multiple channels. I do. I mean, my other uh, 
a movie review channel or movie talk channel, I think is a better way to describe it, has 104 subscribers. And I have one video that has something like 2,700 views. So if you don't mind uh, answering, um, how much do you make on that? Nothing. Movie review. So if you, if you want to make money on YouTube, you got to get to first 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. There are some other things you can do with affiliate links that I explored, but I kind of gave up. I was like, you know what, if I'm going to put the effort into like monitor, monetizing the YouTube station, I might, I'd rather spend that effort doing my, writing my book or something like that, right? right. Doing another draft. So I'm because not, I, uh, so for me, it's a hobby channel. Right. Because I just always assumed it was all small change, basically. No, there's definitely, uh, Joe Rogan was making a lot of money. Well, if they paid him a hundred million to, to go to Spotify, is that right? Yeah, something ridiculous that right? like that. A hundred million. Yeah. So just say that's a that's just say that's for ten years or something. But uh, I mean, just uh, uh, prorated over ten years, that's a million dollars a year. That means that Spotify is year. making, huh? Ten million a year. Oh or yeah, a million right. over ten years it was ten. Yeah. So how much is Spotify making? That they can pay Rogan, to, you know, to they're making at least a hundred million in one dollars. Okay, <laughs> right. I, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, Joe Rogan is basically the Howard Stern slash Larry King of our time, right? I I don't I've never seen him except on a couple of videos where he interviewed oh. some doctors. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what he does. All I know is somebody on Ricochet posted. Oh, it's always on Ricochet. Somebody on Ricochet posted a, a, a television, a, 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 an episode of a television show that he was in. Mm. Uh, it was like news radio or something like that. Oh, okay. And he was funny. I mean, he was he was okay. Mm. Uh, so I could see that. Oh, yeah, he is a comedian because I thought from what I, when I see him on his show, he doesn't look comedic at all. No, not really. He doesn't. He doesn't I even remember look like he, he was on Fear Factor for a while which I oh, didn't really it? watch, but that was kind of like, occasionally you would see it like commercials and or flipping through when that was back when I did have cable, right? Right. Fear Factor. I don't know. Oh, okay. I remember what that show is. Mm. I can't tell Fear Factor from The Apprentice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't but, think uh, Trump uh, forced anyone to have like walk into pits of tarantulas, but I never really watched The Apprentice. I'm sure there would be some sort of executive value for having people go into pits of tarantulas. I think I watched five minutes of, of The Apprentice once. Mm. Yeah. It was interesting. Mm. Yeah. But I, I, I really loved his, he loved his speeches. I think that, that, he, he, that he, he's a great speechifier. Mm. He picks up clues from the crowd and can use that kind of stuff. He's very good improvised speaker kind of thing. And he reads yeah. the crowd well and feeds off them and like moves with them he and, even talks to the crowd yeah you know i mean they'll, they'll shout out at him and he'll start yeah I and mean, he'll, he'll answer briefly but you know, mm. yeah so I, huh. I was surprised i, I that uh, I, I talked with somebody once whose nephew i think it was was a writer for a reality series mm. for for a, 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 he was he was um, shopping a reality series, and I really never realized that they were scripted. Oh yeah, you know, you I know, mean, there's you, some you that are that... more scripted than others, but yeah, it was definitely you know I'm watching the second season of uh, Survivor. I mean, I really got into sort of the first season of Survivor, like a lot of people did. It was the Tiger King of its time. But watching that second season, it became very clear to me they were rigging. Uh, the yeah. event so that one team would catch up to the other because one team was just yeah. powering through and crushing it and they're like oh crap we're not going to have anyone left for the other team to compete against so we have to they started rigging it so the other side would win i think that there's a show that sort of when i saw, heard of survivor or maybe even before survivor was on the air i thought that there would be a it would be a good show to actually have a, de a, a desert island and rig it with every 10 feet is a camera and a, and a microphone and just really release 10 people onto the island and see how they do. And maybe in this day and age, you would just have it, you just, you know, when you've got five, uh, 10 minutes or, or a half an hour or an hour to spare, you you log on and you can either see live of nothing because these would all be uh, mm. 
motion sensor activated or sound activated, uh, you'd either see a half an hour of nothing, or you could actually see a half an hour of of chosen clips, maybe that were mm -hmm. uh, flagged by others, um, other viewers, mm -hmm. and um, so I was really disappointed when I saw the Survivor show was actually a game show. Yeah, basically, <laughs> but but they're. I mean, that's more Big Brother, where they have cameras throughout the house, and you can just turn it on to watch anything that's going on in this house at any particular time. But I, but I think that's scripted too. That's oh, yeah. what I, that's a, what immediately came to mind when she said that they were they write the, the episodes. Uh, you know, every every well, kiss and I every watched, argument. Watching the, the first Big Brother, and it was so it's like you took fifteen of the most stable per people and put them in this house. And it is the most boring thing I've ever watched. So I never got back into it compared to the English show where I'm pretty sure they found 15 characters and put them in the house just to see what would happen. So, hmm. but like the very first big American big, and I think they figured that out after their first season, but their first uh, season was kind of really boring because it's just like you put the most stable, boring people into a extreme situation. No, you don't want that. We don't. No one wants to see sane people. We want to see pe crazy people. <laughs> yeah, but real crazy people. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, I, this is an interest. This is interesting. I've, I never really thought about about. I never thought I'd actually be on YouTube, and I guess I am. Yeah, but huh. but. Uh, but I mean, I'd like to at least just, just, can you just do me a favor? Send me a nickel, just okay. put a nickel in an envelope. Make sure it's a U.S. nickel because okay. Canadian okay. nickels don't, don't work here. Apparently it's illegal it... to send money through the mail. Is it really? That's what my boss was telling me that uh, because we have some sort of coin that our uh, company sends out every year to its employees. And she's like, I'll have to drop it off in person because it's illegal for me to mail it to you. I'm like, don't tell my mom that she sent me 20 bucks in the mail for every Christmas card, right? Jeez. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are you sure about this? Because I'm pretty sure the March of Dimes is always sending me a dime. <laughs> sending you a dime? <laughs> yeah, there's like a dime in the, the actual package of the letter. I'm like, oh, really? I'm pretty sure there's some way around this. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Hmm. I'm still trying to think. I'm just still trying to figure out what I could do on YouTube that would just make me money, just make me a millionaire. Mm -hmm. huh. So maybe if I sit here quietly and think about it long enough <laughs> while being on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. It's like if there's a, and there are, uh, it's, what is that thing they say? It's like, uh, well, I don't know. I guess I'm not thinking about that, but there's like this guy who ended up trading like a pen for a house. Really? What's the, he traded a pen for a house? He just started for with a pen and he kept trading up. And he, he kept... would trade for like one thing and then, or sorry, it was like a paperclip and trade someone else for something a little bigger or more valuable. And suddenly he traded, he managed to at one point get from the, the paperclip to someone, he had some art object and someone said, I'll give you a house for that object. And, <laughs> and this kid traded his way up. Oh, and so that, that's what the, was, that's what you'd see on YouTube is him making these deals on the street yeah. or whatever. Oh yep. yeah, that's interesting. That's huh. So did he make more money from the video or from the fact that he was he sold the house and just uh, took a year off? Yeah, I think I think he made more money from the videos in the end. That was in the yeah. wild days of YouTube. It's a lot harder now. Huh. Yeah. Well, we really didn't talk about uh, anything terribly uh, provocative, yep. and that's interesting. We mm -hmm. just. Uh, we just shot the breeze. Yeah, well, that's always uh, that's something that happens around here. But uh, like I said, we're next Wednesday. We're going to have a uh, a movie fights by the if everyone can make it, and uh, we'll start trying to get some more interviews again to bring get us back to doing what the the show is usually about. Yeah, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. That sounds really good. Okay, well, I'm going. It's uh, been a uh, 
bit of a long day here. Work is going a lot better than it was the, the last, probably the last time I talked to you. So that's good to hear. Good for me. Well, do you mean you're getting used to it and you're getting more proficient and faster? At it? Yeah. Good. It's a, and a lot of, a lot of volume drops drastically. So like. <laughs> Well, exactly what day did the volume drop about uh well my boss was going on vacation and she said i don't understand it normally after the uh, the christmas holidays the volume drops drastically but this week has been so heavy i don't understand it but i'm going on vacation and when she went on vacation the tuesday after that not the first day she was gone the, the second day boom <laughs> dropped <laughs> and yeah. now we've been like much reduced volume because because I, I know that uh i really do would, would like to know this you 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 work in just dis, the distribution business yeah what's how does that affect how is the border uh closure to, to non-vaccinated truck drivers how is that affecting you and how Not really this... and the main reason is because before when i got hired they kind of explained to me uh since the the Bud Light, as some people I know call it, uh, came to be. All uh, truckers were unwilling to cross the border as much as possible beforehand. So unless there's a real emergency, so, right? Was that? That was because of the That was because of the quarantine. Between issue? quarantine and just being safety and all that. So huh. a lot of the company we're working for started moving all their manufacturing back into Canada as much as possible so that they could just ship internally. And the same thing happened in the United States. So for the last two years, a lot of companies have been just, if they can, just because the truck drivers themselves were electing to cross, they uh, started doing it. Started nice. shorting, like moving their, their supply chains. And this is apparently happening all over the world with supply chains, like trying to get move everything back out of Asia and back out of uh, various places because they're like, we cannot rely on having our goods stuck in another country if there's another situation. Right. And mm. all indications are coming down the pike. We're going to have a lot of situations in the next 10 years. Really? Why is that? Uh, the end of globalism. The end of globalism. Yes, we're, we're, the globalism project is on the verge. Is over, it started under Obama. It accelerated under Trump. He was the first, like, uh, uh, the, there's a lot of events that are being seen by a lot of geostrategists and other people. And it just is like, uh, like Trump was like a super booster. Then COVID was another super booster. And just all these things that are, we're watching the end of the, the globalist project. And as such, uh, things are accelerating in a bad way for a lot of places in the world. We're going to start seeing fights for resources that will remind us a lot of the 19th century than the 20th. Huh. So maybe That's I should have made that for another time. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But it's an interesting conversation. Oh, yeah, definitely. And if we're going to have that, we should probably bring someone like Postmodern High Off Light or C Writer in to talk about it. I think that might be more for a panel discussion. Mm -hmm. Or the Z person. Z person? The one who hates uh, colonialism in the United States. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, I, I definitely don't know who that is. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, it was good talking with you, man. Yeah, good to see you too. Um, we'll yeah. have to be doing more of these in the coming year. We're uh, already approaching episode 80, and I'm looking forward to when we get to episode 100 and be like, whoa, we've done like 100 of these things. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so you, I can expect a nickel in the mail for an episode one hundred. Yeah, definitely. We can see about getting and, that done. And, and, and I and I've got a I've got an actual Guam quarter, a quarter that uh, it's a U.S. quarter that says Guam on it and yeah. everything. And I'll, I'll be happy to take take the risk of uh, sending it through the mail. I'll, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do the time. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, I'll see you later then. All right. Yeah, pleasure. See ya. Okay. All good. Right. Bye. -bye.